Sue, so, uh, that was a very, very heartbreaking result, wasn't it? It was heartbreaking, Jerry. Um, I'm not sure many teams come off a pitch having played Germany and, and say they're heartbroken about the result and disappointed not to get something out of the game. But that's exactly how we're feeling right now. Um, the players are distraught in the dressing room and myself and, and the rest of my staff are really disappointed because we feel we deserved at least a draw of this game today. Did everything go according to the, the plans that you had hatched uh, beforehand? It did. It actually went better um, because we scored very early uh, and that wasn't part of the plan, I have to say. So it's always nice to do that. But yeah, I mean, we approached the game and we gave Germany the respect that they deserve. Um, they're, they're one of the top teams in the world, as we know, and they've gone unbeaten for so long that, you know, we felt we weren't going to outplay them. So we weren't going to go all out of attack or be gung-ho, you know. Um, we've built ourselves uh, up to be a very hard team to beat. We're sol we have a solid foundation. We have a very good goalkeeper, um, great back four, and you know we, we're very compact when, when we do defend. But we've also progressed that now to getting forward quickly and tra transitioning um, into an attacking position very quickly. And um, we, I thought we did that very well today. As I said, we scored early by virtue of a, a long throw and a great header by Louise Quinn. And, after that, then I think Germany just couldn't break us down. You know, right up to the to half time, we were very comfortable. I think Emma Byrne had one save to make. What did you say to them at half time? I let them calm down. I stayed outside actually for a little while, let them have a chat amongst themselves, and uh, went in and, and then obviously, you know, praised them for their efforts. But um, there was one or two things that we were disappointed with still that we, 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 we tried to talk about and change and tried to want to get them to improve in the second half. And that was really when we were in possession to use it better. Um, as I said, when we were transitioning, we, we gave a few balls away very cheaply, I felt, which put, it, put ourselves under pressure, you know. But apart from that, there wasn't really a lot, you know. We, we were defending well, as I say, and we, everything was going according to plan. We had a goal in, in, on the board, um, but we knew Germany were going to come out and were going to come at us hard, and they would have had the benefit of the, the wind in the second half. So really, we didn't want to concede anything early and, and, and give ourselves a mountain to climb. And I think, I'm not sure when they, they got the penalty, it was maybe 60, 65 minutes or something. So I think it was all going according to plan until then, and, and that was really unfortunate the way that happened. They certainly got the rub of the green with that particular incident. They did. Um, yeah, it was long ball over the top, and, and we, we, our midfield, it was over the midfield head, and I actually thought um, Sophie Perry should have attacked it before it bounced, but when she let it bounce, then she was sort of jumping from a stop position as such, and with the German player, and there was a collision, as you saw, a clash of heads, and both of them ended up on the ground. Ball broke free, um, and then Louise Quinn was on a 1v1 with, with one of their players, and even then I thought, and she knows herself, I think it was probably a little bit rash, the tackle, Perhaps she could have stayed on her feet longer, but look, these things happen. Um, but I definitely thought the referee should have blowed up with two players down with head injury. I think that's the rule, but we didn't get that, that bit of luck today. Uh, it was the penalty was obviously dispatched in, in a very emphatic manner and that but it, it was still 1-1 at that stage and then the second goal um, was a lot there was a, a lot of question marks over it yeah it was still 1-1 and I suppose at that stage you could see the relief on their faces the way they celebrated uh, their goalkeeper ran a long way to celebrate it, the penalty was put away very well I have to say um, but even their bench like there was like a little bit of relief on their faces and, and you, they were probably thinking that the floodgates would open, you know, as it tends to when they score one goal against teams, they tend to get a second and third and fourth very quickly. Um, and that was always the danger. Then how would my team react? And we were against a strong wind, as I said, but we, we, we regrouped, um, we kept our shape, we kept our discipline, and they still found it very hard to break us down. And then the next goal came again. It was another unfortunate incident. It was a corner, I think, and our goalkeeper was definitely fouled. There's no two ways about it. Um, I thought it straight away from the bench, and I've just confirmed it with her. She said she had the ball in her hands. It wasn't even the case that there was a challenge coming in. She said she actually had the ball in her hands when she was impeded by the player that knocked it out of her hands and then scored. Um, so that's always disappointing when a referee doesn't spot something like that. And you know, and I suppose maybe the the, the smaller nations don't tend to get that that rub of the green against the bigger nations, but that's football. But then you showed tremendous character to, to get back to 2-2. Two, two. Like, you know, most teams don't even do that against Germany. Yeah, most teams then would maybe be happy with 2-1. You know, it's late in the game. <clears throat> um, I, I can't remember what minute they got their second goal, but it's all of a sudden I'm looking and it's 85 minutes on the clock and it's 2-1 and, and we're saying, like, you know, we're, we're still getting attacks in on the mirror. We, we're still causing them problems. There's still sixes and sevens at the back, you know. Um, and particularly any time we had a long throw, they didn't seem to be able to, to cope with that at all. And again, from another one, um, we, we scored Stephanie Roach had come on a few minutes earlier and we said to her she came on get us a goal 
school and she did it we thought she'd made an, uh, made herself a hero again you know so you're looking at the clock and you scored in the 88 minute against Germany you're thinking this is it now you know we're going to get one of the greatest, greatest results ever but unfortunately it wasn't to be Yes. And and you know the, the the third goal, the, the decisive goal, it, it was it was sort of very lucky from from it, from the Germans' point of view because she seemed to be crossing the ball into the box. She was definitely crossing it, and she actually said that she plays with Fiona O'Sullivan at club level in Germany, and she actually said it to her in fairness afterwards that she she didn't mean it wasn't a shot, it was a cross, and as soon as she hit it, my goalkeeping coach like. Jared Dunn said it's in you know and I was standing out in the technical area and I could hear him say it's in and you could see it yourself she whipped it with pace and and unfortunately w w was just caught and she was never going to get near it anyway you know it just flew over her head into the top corner of the net and on another day that would have gone over the bar you know um, so I suppose to lose in that manner and that late in the game we really didn't have a chance to come back and even still we tried to get forward and a couple of times they had the ball and they were going into the corner to try and waste time, which you don't often see a German team do. So I think that was showing respect to us. What do you take from from this performance and this result? I think you have to take huge positives from it. You know, um, yes, we're disappointed right now, but I think you know tonight or tomorrow and the cold light of day in the next week, we have to take huge positives from it. Um, to hold one of the best teams in the world, uh, you know, to be leading them for so long, and then to 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 hold to be two all in the 88 minutes, it's it's just a tremendous achievement, and I think it'll make other countries look look at us and say, you know, they're a difficult team to beat now, and I think if we could take this performance forward to the rest of the games in our group and continue to grow and continue to to put in performances every game, you know, I think we're certainly going in the right direction, and it'll help us in our aim to finish second. The next game is a is a big one, probably even bigger than this game uh, against Russia, um, who are, who are the team that you're battling with for for second place. Um, does this affect how you approach that game? Well, it doesn't really. Um, I mean, this week, all the week, I was saying to the girls, this is bonus territory, you know. So, in other words, nothing was expected of us. Um, no one was expecting us to get anything out of the game, and, and history was saying we were never going to get anything out of the game. So anything we did, you know, if we did, would have been bonus, and what a bonus it would have been. But our target and our focus has always been on Russia, and obviously the teams below us. And we've played three, we've played them all once now, and we haven't played Russia yet. So that was the big target for us. So we're still we're still going to prepare in the same way for them, the same manner for them that we would have, and um, we look forward to welcoming them to Dublin next month.